I attended a funeral today for a woman called Janie Roberts. It wasn't a religious service, just a very basic one at the local crematorium. No speeches, flowers, and very few mourners. Just me and my younger sister, and some older folk and carers from the care home where she'd lived out her final days. I didn't shed a single tear, which I suppose is sad in itself. I felt nothing other than a sense of duty to attend. After all, she had been my mother. Do you know that the physical symptoms of fear and excitement are almost exactly the same? Janie Roberts scared me and excited me in equal measures. I was always trying to second guess her emotions, trying to please her. She was my God. She was very beautiful to look at, everybody said so like Audrey Hepburn, they said. I was 10 years old when she suddenly left home. <laughs> and I mean suddenly. Well, she just didn't come home one day. She left my dad a note and he told us that we were forbidden to ever mention her name again. So we never did. Occasionally, Janie would, would dance with me. <laughs> I love to dance. I still do. It was a chance for me to get close to her. I can't ever remember her cuddling me. I dreamt of being a ballerina. She told me that I was too ungainly and best suited for playing sports with my physique. <laughs> she had beautiful, long, slender legs, and well, I haven't. Mine are short and stubby like my dad's, which I think is a blessing now, as he would have found it too difficult if I'd resembled her. He would have would have made him sad and, and then angry. After she left, I, I couldn't bear seeing my dad being sad. I tried my hardest to make him laugh, telling jokes. You know, sometimes it worked, but mostly he only laughed down the pub with his, with his friends. <laughs> he was there an awful lot. I idolized her. I was desperate for any attention that she would give me, good or bad. She called me her, her ugly duckling and that if I was lucky, I might turn into a beautiful princess like my sister. I learned how to control my tears. She would call me a crybaby and that she was just being honest. And that if a mother can't tell you the truth, who can? I never knew why she left. I've, I thought it was something to do with me. Something that I might have done to displease her. Well, I found out later she, she went off with one of my dad's friends. I never spoke to her again. Well, she didn't want to. I spent a lifetime searching for the reasons why she didn't love me. And a whole heap of money in therapy trying to work out why I was so unlovable. I've sabotaged so many relationships. Just scared to attach myself for fear that People would leave me. A problem with intimacy, my, my therapist said. You know, life lessons will keep on repeating themselves and, and, and until you learn them. And, and when you finally do, then everything changes. I didn't stay after the funeral. It didn't feel appropriate. I, I don't even know why I went. I mean, I haven't seen her for so many years, it was a lifetime ago. I can't turn back time and, well, I wouldn't want to, because all of that history shapes the person that I am today and I really love who that person is. I've been married now for over 20 years to a wonderful man who loves my short stubby legs and tells me daily how beautiful I am. I have two beautiful daughters who, who I love equally and we dance and we cuddle all the time. I did love her once, but that was a long time.